Thank you, Butch. And right now we have got, I'm excited. Come on. I'm going to be honest with you now. I'm excited, Clint. <laughs> Me too. We're gonna... That's right. In this book in particular, we've got so much to talk about, but I'm going to go ahead and just knock it out right, right. here with this. Let's do it. This book is an actual account of your demon possession. Pretty much. I call it oppression. Oppression. Oppression would be more biblically, biblically accurate. I so do, we, because I don't think oppression. the devil can take you over. That's right. It's a choice. It yeah. is. It is a choice that we yield to and give our lives over to him because that's all he has. He has absolutely no power None. but suggestion. He lies to us. He comes in, tricks, that. perverts scripture, and we're going, you know, it's up to us if we're going to believe it or not. So it's, it's about a choice. It's about well, a choice. Well, tell us about the choice you made to... Uh, to have well, this experience. The choice was uh, for me growing up, you know, wasn't raised in a Christian home. Uh, my parents knew a little bit about God, but didn't really know the truth about God. Didn't right. know that he was powerful and wanted to be a part of your life and be with you and in you and living and teaching you how to live and, and all that the that relationship. Good stuff. The relationship, mm -hmm. yeah. So got into drugs and drinking at an early age and... Uh, how early is early? Well, uh, <laughs> I guess probably started drinking at about 12 or 13. Started doing harder drugs at 13, smoking pot. Started doing acid at about 14, late 14, early 15. So he got you young. Got me young, yeah. And this book actually is about that account, the account of really an account of about the last year of when I did drugs. Uh, there, uh, you know, I'll just kind of break it down real fast, but um, there was a particular night where I was on acid and I started hearing all these voices, hearing all these sounds, and, and I started recognizing that they were voices. And I paid more attention to them, which was the first mistake. If I wouldn't have paid attention to them, I think this may have never happened. But as I was listening to these voices, they started telling me, you're about to die. Here it comes. You're about to die. Here comes your death. And so they long story short, they actually convinced me, they being demons, which I later realized, convinced me to believe that I had died and gone to hell. You know, again, I had no truth in me. I didn't know to say, no, uh -uh, no, this is not true. You know, I... You actually heard I heard voices. voices. They started outside my head, and by the end of the night, they were inside my head. I could, you know, they were so close, I could hear them. It was, it was as if they were my own thoughts. Wow and uh, convinced me to believe that I had died and gone to hell. And I walked around for about six months believing that I was dead and in hell before God got to me. Good night. Yeah, it was, a, it was sheer torture and torment that I But see, I you know even... what, I'm going to be honest with you, Clint, mm -hmm. and John, I mean, I, I'm thinking demon possession. I'm right. thinking the exorcist. I'm right. thinking your head's twisting around. Yeah. I'm green thinking suit. you're vomiting green right. goo. <laughs> I'm not thinking the subtlety, but you know what? That's how the, the devil is. He's so subtle. Right. right. Until we, you get that, until you put yourself in that right situation, then he's on you. So, so what you're saying is you kind of just opened the door for him to come on in. Pretty much. How yeah. did you get set free from that? I mean, that's. I mean, how do you? How do you? Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's the really interesting part is that uh, because at this point I believed that there was no hope for me. I was dead. I was in hell. I'm gone. It's too late for me. I'm mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. And so, about six months into it, I remember questioning because there'd be there'd be th and I talk about it in the book, um, which you can get at my website, Clintbuyers.com. Yeah, let's talk because I'm yeah. definitely. This is mine. I'm taking it home. <laughs> but. Uh, so about six months into it, I asked the question, what about God? Because see, what happened was all these lies and were... And you were still continuing the I was, drugs? Yeah, I just went, no, 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 I was done with the drugs. Okay. I was, you know, scared to death of the drugs from then on, no oh, pun intended. Wow. I never touched drugs again um, because of just the fear that came yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I said, what about God? And this glimmer of hope came in. Wow. And for the next six months, he walked with me. Now, for six more months, I still had a hard time believing, because, see, I, you're in hell. None of this is real. You're a demon. You're a demon. Everybody's a demon, you know? You, you, and that's what you that's literally what thought. thought. That's what I thought. That you was, thought, that's it. I'm just, this that is was it. my reality. It wasn't truth, but that was my reality. Ooh. During those six months, mm -hmm. were you that you thought you were in hell, mm -hmm. did you continue? I, I know you said for the six months after that you right. didn't, but during those six months, did you continue to take any type of... No, 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 no. So from you that, were, you were drug forward, free from that done. night? Yeah. Well, that's a cold done. turkey way to go in it. Yeah, but you know what? Fear is a powerful motivator, it unfortunately. Is. But, you know, it worked. I, I hate to use so the word nobody shared. Nobody shared the gospel with you. No. You, you just... 
Ooh, that's what I was talking about earlier, y'all. When Holy I said God Spirit. was pursuing, the Holy Spirit was pursuing yeah. you, was wooing right. you. Right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, we we get this concept that we think we got to get out there and be saving people, and we put such a heavy burden on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are co-laborers with Christ. We do need to be out there sharing, yes, but it's the Holy Spirit that draws that's people right. in. Absolutely. We plant those seeds. So here I'm we walking. We can't do it. No, we can't yeah. do it. We you can know? just live it. We just talk and, love and you know, it. let 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 him do the rest. I love that. <laughs> it's the truth. So. So he walks me through this next six months and he's making himself real to me. There were times where I would see him and literally in the car with me and he'd be talking to me and telling me, I mean, of oh, all wow. things he's teaching me, you're not, you know, it's, you're not dead. You are alive. And of course, I didn't, it took me a long time to believe. It took me about another six months to actually believe that. But I'll tell you what really did it for me was that I was sitting on a, a sofa in my home. Um, and I was just considering the possibility of this being true. Maybe I'm not dead. Maybe, maybe I am alive. Maybe there is hope, you know. Mm. And, and instantly, you know, I just, I had, I was back like this, had my eyes closed, and I can still see this vision. You know, mm. when you have a vision, when you have having a real encounter with God, mm. it changes you forever. Forever. Instantly. And that's what we need. We need real encounters with God, not just head knowledge. Knowledge just puffs up. We need an experience. Well, so I'm sitting there, and I see Jesus hanging on a cross. And it's like in Isaiah 52 where it talks, you know, Isaiah 53 is a prophecy about what Jesus is going right. to do on the cross. Isaiah 52 ends by saying that his visage was marred more than any. You couldn't recognize him. Basically, he just looked like a lump of meat up there because he had taken all of the sin of everybody in the whole world on his body. On past, present, future, everything. Everything. That's right. And so I'm sitting here looking at this lump of meat, but I know that it's Jesus and I can see eyes. And it's as if I'm peering back in, back in time, 2,000 years, and actually seeing the moment when he was on the crucified. cross, right. crucified. And he's, yeah. and he's looking at me, and I can see his eyes. I can still see it right now, and I get emotional about it because it was so real. Such, so real. It was true, you know. It was the first true thing that I had experienced in months. So, so and did, did you even know about the cross and, and vaguely, all that? I mean, you know. So, but you, so did, oh, okay. But I'm yeah, trying to be, put I, I myself it. in your I, position. I never understood it right. before. You know, a lot of people are out there, they don't understand but see, the, the Lord cross. was revealing that to you. Exactly. Because if you didn't know that story and you've never experienced it and grew up and this is what happened, and right. then he was revealing himself to well, you. And it's the typical American culture. You know, you know, Jesus died and went to a cross, you're going to heaven. Right. Well, what does that really mean? What does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean to you? What exactly. does that mean to Kim? What does that mean to John? So what it meant to me was I was sitting there and it meant to me that you are saved from a life of hell. Right. I, have gra I have taken you out of the pit. And, and so I'm, I'm looking at him and I know that he did this just for me right. if one I had on been one. the You're only person on. yes. ever. Yes, sir. And so then he begins to take me through this process. He takes me into Colossians and he says, he shows me there where it says, we've been delivered mm. from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And then he teaches me in Ephesians that we have, we were raised with Christ I mean, when he came up out of that grave, we were raised from the dead, too. We are now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 1 John says, as he is right now, so are we, we. in this world. Mm -hmm. We are so much more than we realize. And it all has to do with what he did on the cross. He took all of our shame, guilt, punishment, set us completely free. It's no longer based on what we do uh, say. That's right. Hallelujah. Act. But and then he gave us his power. All right, you got to stop right there. Okay. Because we've got more <laughs> to talk to you about. Let me tell you something. If you heard what he just said, pick up the phone and call us. If Christ only came just to die for you, right, right now we're going to go to the prayer room Amen. and we're going to find out what's going on. We'll be right back.